this makes it, it all the more uh, sinister, uh, the effect, if not the motive, uh, th that people who are saying God is done with the Jews because they rejected yeah. uh, the Messiah, right. to, to, to follow that out uh, leads to very, very dangerous places. And that, that's one side. That's the replacement theology side. But there's another side uh, in American evangelicalism, at least. Uh, we're going to love Jews. We're going to bless Israel. We're going to you know, provide uh, material and, and political support. But don't worry. We're not going to tell them about Jesus. You don't have to worry. We're not going to preach the gospel because we know that would be offensive. To me, that is as anti-Semitic uh, as, as the other side because the result is yeah, either you we, think we, God... We, Jews cannot come to faith, or don't worry, we won't try to help them come to faith. I, I, yeah, with worse I, I'm troubled by both. With worse consequences. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, this, is, this is Romans 10. The, the, you know, this is my heart. Um, Paul says in 9, I could wish myself accursed. You know, if cursing me could bring the salvation of Israel. I have a, a, a zeal for them. I have a passion for them, and they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Then he goes down through, they, 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 they miss so many things. They, they, they don't understand the righteousness of God. They think God is less righteous than He is. They think they're more righteous than they are, so they can please God by their works. Uh, and then he goes through that whole thing, and he finally says, how are they going to hear uh, if, if you don't preach? Mm -hmm. Faith comes by hearing the message concerning Christ. So the, what we, our obligation is the obligation of Romans 1. Uh, Paul says, I am debtor to the Jew. What do I owe the Jew? I don't owe the Jew a political support. I don't owe the Jew economic stability or military backup. I owe him the gospel. That's my obligation. It's important, obviously, that, that our our understanding of the scriptures lead us, you know, to action, right? We can't just say, I believed it and, and, it, and it became an intellectual or theoretical exercise. For some it is, um, but I think that, that if we understand the heart of the gospel and the heart of God's love for a lost people, hmm. the Jews are as lost as, as the Gentiles, sadly. And it's worse for us in a sense because we ought to have known better. This is why we were made to know Christ and to make him known. But... Um, well, it's a horror what you're talking about because you have Jesus looking at the city of Jerusalem and weeping mm -hmm. and saying, how often I would have gathered you as a hen gathers a brood, but you would not. You, you, you've been killing the prophets and stoning everybody that's sent to you, and now look what you've done. Uh, but but he, he, he weeps. I mean, it's, it's, he's, his, his heart is broken. Mm -hmm. And then you go into the epistles, and Paul says, look, we are debtors to the Jews. We have to take the gospel to them. Mm -hmm. uh, if we get caught up in trying to make sure we don't offend the Jews... Uh, we, we will we'll have to answer to the, to the Lord for a very serious violation of the very reason we're here in this world, and that is to proclaim the gospel first to the Jew. Uh, you know, Jesus, first to the Jew. You know, um, I have come to the lost sheep of the house That's of right. Israel first. And I think that that obligation still is on every Christian's heart. It should be on every Christian. I hope heart. so. And I'm grateful for the Gentiles that didn't say, oh, but if Joel, you come up he's with got this... some special deal, or oh, Joel, no, no. he's too dumb to get it, or he's blind as a bat, or all the different <laughs> ways that uh, you can make it seem like, oh, I, this, shouldn't, this gospel shouldn't motivate me to take it to Jewish people or bless them in, certain, you know, in, in the full scope of, of the way the gospel speaks. Well, if you, just, if, if you take them out of the picture, you know, God's cursed them, he's done with them, the church is everything, and it's easy to shirk that responsibility. Uh, and, and I think that's part of the disastrous fallout of that replacement theology, mm -hmm. is that obligation, that passion, with the confidence that, that, that Isaiah had in chapter 6 when God said to him, uh, who will I send? And he says, uh, I, I think out of fear, here am I, send me, because of what he had just seen. And, uh, and the, a wish to be restored. As to yeah, and the Lord says, well, go. And, and he says, oh, by the way, uh, nobody's going to listen, nobody's going to see, nobody's going to understand. And so he says, well, how long would I do that? And he says, you keep doing it till there are no people left, till there's nobody to talk to. Well, why would I do that? And then I love how that chapter ends. He says, because there's a stump, there's a holy seed, there's a remnant. And that's true. In every generation, there's a remnant. And for this generation, we want to reach that remnant. But there's coming a day in the future when it won't just be a remnant. After the rebels are purged out, as the prophet says, the whole nation will come to Christ.
subscribe to our videos by clicking the subscribe button. You'll find some videos that we've chosen specifically for you. And if this is a ministry that you'd like to support financially, just make a tax deductible donation by clicking here to visit our giving page. Thank you. We look forward to partnering with you to bless Israel and her neighbors in the name of Jesus.